Hi, my name is Nick Jackson. I'm also known as Larger Armour on Twitter. I'm currently a head of IT in a school in York in the UK. But as from the beginning of October, I'll be with you in Australia as I emigrate with my family to set up a new life and to try and make an impact in your education system as well. Now, I've been involved in many projects related to IT as a subject and related to technology and education across all disciplines, largely in secondary schools, but also in primary and some FE as well. I want to talk to you today about digital leaders. Whether you've heard of this sort of idea or not, to me, it's something that cannot be ignored and it's something that will not be ignored and will have a major impact in the way technology is adopted and makes progress of changing schools and leading them to 21st century education. So, digital leaders. It's really about empowerment. And this is empowerment that takes it to a new level. So let's have a look at the journey that we've been on in our school. I'll give you a little bit of context here. Uh, we wanted to uh, start digital leaders after we were inspired by a couple of people on Twitter. They're the names coming up there. They, are, they gave birth to this concept and we took it on from there. We started by asking for people in school who wanted to apply to be digital leaders. We opened it up to everyone within school, all the student body, and we got applications coming in. We asked for applications in any way students could think of. And indeed what you're looking at there is a Morse code entry for one of our students. It does read perfectly how it should do for answers to questions, but in Morse code. And that's how that digital leader chose to apply. Of course, he has since become one of our digital leaders. After we'd recruited the digital leaders, we set about training them. But not training them using tools or IT or anything like that. We train them to speak, to present. We also train them to be trainers. In other words, to be able to work with um, older people and younger people, how you would have to deal with people who were perhaps not as savvy as them with technology. Dealing with tact, dealing with people who perhaps weren't happy about being there. So presentation skills and training skills. Our first assignment with them, or our first project, whatever you want to call it, was for them to be involved in inset sessions where they train teachers. So inset being teacher training in our school, uh, these were twilight sessions, so after school they ran sessions. So uh, they trained our own staff on how to use particular pieces of software. They organised this, they ran this, and they trained the, the teachers. The feedback from that was unbelievable. Staff couldn't believe that these students that they had been teaching in their classes could be so confident and so good at delivery, but they were. Our next project then went on to videoing. We set up an outstanding teaching and learning group within the school and we wanted to video lessons that showed outstanding practice. We set this all up and they had to video the whole lot. This was not with an expensive kit, this was with a cheap kit. They had to put the videos together, they had to edit them. They had to deal with all the technical issues, they had to deal with the logistics. This took hours and hours of their time. Sometimes they came in on days off, sometimes they came in on their own study leave to make sure they finish this. The dedication, the project management was unbelievable. So I suppose you're asking yourself, well, I don't want to do any of these things, why would I bother? Well, to me, you should bother for these reasons. And if you're not bothered about those reasons, think of the reasons that your students should become digital leaders. And this is only touching the surface. As I've already said, I'll be in Australia on the beginning of October. From then, I intend to take the digital leader movement into every state within your country. Please support this.